Meet Malcolm Walter, astrobiologist at the University of New South Wales. He's also the founder of the Australian Centre for Astrobiology. He's also an expert in stromatolites, and he's written a book about the search for life on Mars. And here's the website of the Astro Australian Centre for Astrobiology. I'm Malcolm Walter. I'm an astrobiologist at the University of New South Wales. And are we alone? Well, that's the, that's the, well, I'm going to rock, aren't I? That's the question, isn't it, Charlie? And nobody knows the answer. Nobody knows the answer. Nobody so knows the answer. So, okay, so why are we even talking about it? Because it's one of the biggest questions in uh, humanity. Well, why, what makes it big? Well, why we, is it important? We only have one sample of life, and that's, uh, that's life on Earth. Everything we know about biology is based on one sample. Now, your, one of your specialties is early life on Earth. It is. Stromatolites, for example. Can mm -hmm. you tell us what stromatolites are? They're the microbial reefs. They're, they're structures that can be as big as the Great Barrier Reef, but built by microbes. And they're generally layered because they, they form millimetre by millimetre layers and oh. say accrete. Yeah, uh, you have something over here. Is this a stromatolite there? <laughs> This is a somewhat adulterated stromatolite with a bottle of wine in the, in the middle. Oh, all right, can you show us that? All right, <laughs> there it is. Okay. So, this is a 2.7 billion year old stromatolite. 2.7, how do you know how old it is? Well, it's been dated, it comes from rocks in the Pilbara in Western Australia and uh, interlayered with, with this limestone layer. There are volcanic rocks that contain radioisotopes. Where, I mean, this is a limestone layer, you're saying? Yeah. Could you point to some of the layers, please? You can see the, the, the mic almost microscopic layers there, each one uh, representing a former microbial mat, we call it. Micro, now it's not, doesn't look very flat, it looks like it's cone-shaped. Yeah, these, these are distinctive sorts of stromatolites that um, we can reason we're formed by photosynthetic organisms. Photosynthetic organisms? Mm. How long ago? So you said 2.7 2.7 billion years ago. Is that our ancestor? Did that evolve into us? Well, it's part of our uh, ancestry. And it's... I mean, could that organism that was there have evolved into you and me? Is my question. Not whether it's a sister group, but could that organism have been, if you had your ancestor and your ancestor and your ancestors, could that be one of them? Uh, this could be one of them, in the sense that, that it could be one component to, um, that eventually became a nucleated cell. Mm -hmm. The organisms that built these stromatolites were not nucleated. The d DNA was scattered through the cell material, the mm -hmm. cytoplasm. Mm -hmm. And so there had, and had to have been a series of steps to get from bacteria, like the things that built this, through to sexually reproducing cells, right. then on to animals. Right, but, but that could be your great, 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 great grandmother and father or something. Yeah, could be. Now, you've been involved in astrobiology for a long time. Yep. And you've seen it change, I guess, over 20 or 30 years. Where's, well, where's astrobiology going and where should it go? Or is it going where it should go, you think? Um, in general, it's going where it, where it should go. I think it's been uh, dri driving um, a major aspect of planetary exploration for a long time. Uh, and it performs a, v a very useful service anyway in driving interdisciplinary thinking, which I think is a, is a fundamental uh, good for, for science. It uh, doesn't happen often enough. What about nano-aliens? I've, I've proposed that we should be looking for nano aliens with electron microscopes or scanning tunneling microscopes in the, in the, with the idea that, you know, these advanced, we're making technology smaller and smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. And I guess if you extrapolate a, a million years into the future, then you can make it really tiny and then you could have nano aliens going all over the place and they'd be so small that no one has seen them. What do you think of that idea? Is that crazy? No, it's not crazy, uh, but we have the ability to look for nano aliens. And we do, but no one seems to be following up. I can't convince a microscopist to start looking for nano aliens. They think I'm crazy. Well, you know, we had our fingers burnt with nanobacteria not so long ago. Yes, so tell me about that story. What happened to Philippe Owens? 
Not on camera. <laughs> okay. All right. So, all right. So, tell me about in general. Then, nanobacteria. That was some scientists reported they had seen it, and what happened? They go away, and it, they mistook something else for nanobacteria, or? Yeah, um, it was a fashion from about um, ten years at the most, and there was a lot of debate about uh, how small life could get. Yes. When it relates to your question about nanoorganisms, nano life, and. Uh, any conceivable form of life that has biochemical machinery or needs proteins um, doesn't get smaller than about a tenth of a micron. What kind of aliens would you like to find emotionally? <laughs> Ones I could communicate with. Okay, so this communication, why do you want to communicate? What, what would it, what's, it to, what's in it for you? I'm curious about the universe. What, go ahead, what are the questions? I'm an alien, hello, I'm an alien, <laughs> ask me some questions. <laughs> um, can you travel faster than the speed of light? No, I cannot. Go ahead, ask me another question. Have you discovered other aliens in other parts of the universe? Yes, but we killed them. <laughs> um, I think you should let, let us live because we can teach you a lot of interesting things. Like what? Like how not to um, destroy your environment. We have already figured that out. We have lived four <laughs> billion years longer than you have. How can you teach us something? Well, we have a different perspective on, on lots of things, no doubt. It, you are like an amoeba to us. <laughs> well, if we're no use to you, just leave us alone and go somewhere else. We're going to destroy you just like we destroy all life. Oh, well, what, there's no, no point to this conversation then, is there? So this was not interesting communication between us? It started off as interesting communication, <laughs> <laughs> but very, quick, very quickly deteriorated. <laughs> well, well, I'm just trying to understand, you said that you wanted to communicate with aliens, and yeah. I'm trying to understand the details of, I mean, besides having a romantic, uh, high-in-the-sky vision of, yeah, it'd be cool to talk to aliens, I mean, what are the specifics of it? For example, some physicists want them to answer the, all the physics questions and say the theory of everything, yeah. and other more... Uh, socio humanists want to hey solve all of our problems and our ethical issues and that's another thing that they want aliens to do um, and so I'm wondering as a as an earth scientist what kind of do you have any questions that the scientific questions that you want the aliens to to solve or yeah well I'd certainly like to know how life started on this planet or everywhere 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 so mm. so you'd like to know is how... it inevitable okay is life a cosmic imperative and why is that important why what because Some people don't, I mean, like most of the people on this planet, we've got like 8 billion people, hardly anybody, maybe less than 1% care about this issue, and then there's another 10% who think it's a cool question, but they really uh, would rather watch TV. So, but you're not, you're one of these 1%, so what, what is it about your worldview that makes this an important question? I'm just curious about, uh, about the world, about the universe, and uh, how life started is probably the biggest question of all.